I'm going to be introducing you to one of my favorite desserts from my childhood and not a lot of people have heard of this dessert so I'm actually really excited to share it with you and then we'll eat it together at the end and I think almost everyone would like this dessert but obviously some people might not. It has quite a few steps so let's get started right away. Okay, so the base of this dessert is a sugar cookie batter. I'm going to get that going and then we'll start on our topping preparation while that is baking. So we're going to start off with softening the butter because it is a little bit cool from the refrigerator still. So I'm just going to microwave it very carefully so I don't accidentally over melt it. I'm just going to put this towel down so the bowls don't make as much sound. I am someone who loves eating raw cookie dough and I have no fear of salmonella. I know professional manufacturers always say how dangerous it is, but I think that's just like to cover their behinds from any liability. So we're just going to start off with 10 seconds. So we are going to do our dry ingredients first. I'm just going to keep an eye on that so it doesn't melt though. So you sift it first and then you measure it. Because it's really dense, so when you sift it, you basically are adding air back into it and then I think it makes for a fluffier dough, less thick and dense, I would imagine. So you know how some recipes call for packed sugar or non-packed sugar? I believe it's the same idea. I don't have a proper sifter, so I'm just actually, I'm just going to pour this in using this little strainer. What's that word for strainer? Colander. This is not a colander, actually. It's just a strainer, I think. I don't know. I don't have any colander training. I just resell it. We need three cups of flour. That might be enough now that it's fluffed. Let's find out. So we're just going to gently fill the cup measurement so that we don't accidentally put it and make it thick again. And baking is really serious with the chemistry. Like you need it to be precise. Okay, there's one cup. This is definitely not in a flower as is suspected, so we're gonna have to open a new package. But first, let's get the rest of this out. Brand new. 
sometimes I feel impatient and it's hard for me to do stuff like this. I was tempted to use a sugar cookie mix because it cuts out so much steps, but I really, like as a professional cookie dough consumer, you can taste such a difference between homemade cookie dough and store-bought cookie dough. Probably because of the butter mainly, and then also I imagine they put some sort of preservatives in the store-bought cookie dough. Because what don't they put preservatives in? more. Two cups of flour. We might have almost the perfect amount. Close. A little bit extra. We'll just put it back in the flour bag. Okay. Three cups in. So let's put this back in our flour sack. Beautiful. Set that aside. Okay. Next, our recipe calls for three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. I'm going to say everything out loud because fractions are not my forte. One, two, three. Three carrots and two spoons of salt and one and a half tablespoons. One and a half teaspoons. It's a close call. Capital T is a tablespoon, lower place T is a Wait, capital T is a tablespoon, lowercase t is a, is a teaspoon. Baking powder. I have my baking soda out for washing the fruit after. Okay, so baking powder, one and a half. So I'm going to use the quarter again because I don't have to eyeball it. I should have left more of the paper on the baking powder so I could flatten the tops. Wait. One and a half, so I need... I'll just do it this way, because that's a half. And this is a teaspoon. Do you find fractions bamboozling or are you really good at them? What's next? Sift flour, add salt, add baking powder. Ooh, we're gonna sift it again. So I'm just gonna mix this up first, even though it didn't say to do that. I'm assuming that makes sense. This cookbook is from the 60s home ec class of one of my parents. So it has black and white photos in it and it has really traditional recipes. It has cooking and baking and it has, I think it even has a chapter on how to be a proper homemaker, like how to set the dinner table and what to serve, how to serve it. I should probably read that. Okay, so let's sift this mixture back into our bigger bowl. Mm -hmm. So I guess we really want this dough to be super fluffy. Maybe I'll do it by the cup. Less messy. Scoop it and then...
think the rest I can pour. Boom. Okay. So we're just going to set this aside for now. Okay. So now we are going to cream our butter. Which. Make it a little bit softer. cream or butter one and a half three quarters cups of butter <laughs> Beautiful. since this is a sugar cookie dough we definitely need the sugar so we're gonna add the sugar in gradually one and a half cups so first I'll start off creaming the butter so back in the day they didn't have actually I don't know when they invented electric mixers I don't own one so we're gonna do this I usually use my spatula for this but it's so soft that it feels like it takes forever so I think this way may be better. It's actually creaming pretty quick, I think because I melted it. Okay, so let's start getting our sugar in there. Gradually. This is actually large crystal sugar. I don't know why, but it's different than the normal sugar. I think there was a sugar shortage, actually, is how we ended up with this big sugar only being available on the shelves because maybe it's not as popular. Considering baking is such a science, it probably will affect our dough, but it's all that I have in my pantry, so. It's the one we're using. I have just under half a cup of sugar left, but um, you'll see this recipe, like, is so sweet that we probably don't need the exact amount of sugar. And this, my friends, is how baking can go terribly wrong. getting thick now. That's what it looks like. Thank you to the cows who made this butter. I hope they are treated really, really well. So how they make butter is they milk the cow and then, well traditionally, I don't know how the factory did it, traditionally you milk the cow and then you take the raw milk and you churn it, so you beat it and whip it. And you keep doing that for a long time and eventually the liquids of the milk fall to the bottom and that's what's called buttermilk. And then the fat of the milk is left in the lump that you've churned and it looks similar to this. So you keep the buttermilk and use that for whatever buttermilk's for, fried chicken and whatever. And then, you're left with the raw butter. So that's raw butter. I don't really understand the pasteurizing process. I remember learning about it because it was quite life-changing. Um, but I forgot. Okay, so that definitely looks fluffy. Would you say that's fluffed? I would say that's fluffed. 
Mm -hmm. I could eat just that. Okay, is that food safe? Next, we are going to beat two eggs. We need another bowl. Holy. I'm actually going to use this little bowl that we put our butter in. Oh, I already have the eggs in a bowl. There you go. Beat the eggs. Just kidding. I love you. I would never hurt you. Except for right now. A mini whisk, how cute. Good. Beat. Actually, we need three eggs. That was a close call. See if I can do the, oh no, I don't want to risk it. The one hand crack, you know, some people do the one hand crack. This bowl's a little bit small for three eggs. Beat eggs while and add vanilla. They kind of make it sound like I'm supposed to beat the eggs into the mixture. Maybe we'll do that. My bad, my bad. Where's the mixture? Oh, I didn't even add all the sugar yet. What a dang bad. I think I got distracted because our mixture is getting so thick. She's thick. You like her like that. Ooh, let's turn the oven on. The oven needs to be on 350. This oven is um, deranged and it's way hotter than it says, so I'm gonna put it on just over 300 because it has ruined a couple of things I've baked. It's kind of scary actually. Hopefully not this recipe, we'll see. Okay, so now we're gonna add our eggs in to our creamed butter and sugar that possibly we're supposed to already be together, but they're reunited at last. These eggs are from free range chickens that live their best life on the farm. Okay, let's put the vanilla in. I love vanilla. Um, I did eat vanilla once and it somehow tastes terrible. I don't know why, it tastes like alcohol. It's not something good on its own. Ooh, it smells like alcohol. So we need one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. I like to do, oh, two, we're doing extra apparently. Let's pick that in there. Mmm, smells really good. Oh, it smells delicious. So after this, we're gonna add the sifted ingredients and stir until it rolls in the bowl. I'm actually gonna add this into the sifted ingredients because that bowl is bigger. There's our, oh, I don't know if I can show you this without spilling looking so delicious okay move these ingredients aside so we have a little more working area and bring the move our fruit so that the oven doesn't melt it can you melt the fruit probably not okay let's go It's 
almost cookie dough. Almost cookie dough. I don't know where my special is. You'd be, if you've never baked, you would be shocked at how much extra product you can get off the bowl with a spatula. This spoon is working pretty well though. All right, we're gonna mix this all together until it forms a dough. This bowl was starting to get hot from the oven preheating, so hopefully it didn't affect the flour. Because isn't there some sort of cooking procedure where you bake flour? I don't know. Seems like a lot of flour, but I guess to get it all in. Messy. I'm a little bit messy, honestly. I'm kind of like a tornado when I'm in my creative mode. I leave a path of destruction. But it's actually creation, it's the opposite of destruction. But maybe something needs to be destroyed for something else to be created. That's deep. That's some deep philosophizing. Okay, our cookie dough is taking shape. I just got to get the little bit edges of the flour incorporated. Because if you don't mix it properly, you'll have kind of these like dry flour bites in your cookie. Oh my god, I can't wait to eat some of this. I mean, why is it so good? Um, I've always loved cookie dough. Does everyone love cookie dough? Some people think it's gross. I've always been a little bit of a sweet piglet. All right, this is looking beautiful. So this is where the recipe becomes different than your average sugar cookie recipe. We're gonna take a pizza pan. This pizza pan has lived a very long and fulfilled life and grease it, so I'm gonna use my butter wrapper. You can use pan. Oh, this might not be enough butter. Let's see. You can use, oh yeah, there's. You can use pan or cooking spray. I just don't have any, I might use oil. So you, this isn't like a secret trick, but something you can do is you can, a little bit of cooking oil on a paper towel and then wipe the pan with it if you don't have a spray. Because you don't want to, if you put too much oil, it'll make the bottom of your treats greasy and kind of not cook. I've done that before with brownies. So I ate them, of course. But it does make a difference. Okay, so now we're gonna roll our dough onto the pizza pan. This seems like a lot. Okay, beautiful. Now you have to take a little bit of flour or else the dough will stick to your hands and the rolling pin. We don't want too much because then it throws off the ratio of the flour in the cookie dough mix. So I'll leave a little bit of flour on my hand and just kind of start to spread it. And then we'll finish it off with the pin. Even I just roll. Uh oh, I feel it sticking already. We need more flour. Okay. Normally with sugar cookie dough, you chill it and then it's not as sticky, but we don't have time for that. I don't know if that affects the baking process, possibly. It would make sense because. It would affect the temperature. Just make sure the edges are clean and that they're not like sticking outside of the pizza pan so that your sugar cookie looks lovely. So 
I'm just cleaning up those edges. I said even so that it bakes evenly. I'm going to use a fork to poke some holes. And you'll see why we're doing this later. Don't do the very edges. Pretend there's like a pizza crust. So the thickness and your oven is going to determine how long you bake this, but you got to keep an eye on it. My oven's notorious for burning the bottom while the top looks raw. So I'm going to check mine a little bit extra than most people would. You can pop that in. And definitely get a timer on. I love sugar cookie dough. It's so good. I love all cookie dough. Let's be, let's be clear about that. But sugar cookie dough, something about it just hits the childhood, the inner childhood spot. Okay, let's make our toppings. So we're gonna have kiwis, grapes, pineapple, and peach drinks. Two of those are canned, two of those are fresh, so I'm just gonna wash the fresh fruits. So I like to wash fruit by putting it in baking soda and water and scrubbing it. We do peel the kiwis, but I'm gonna wash them anyways because who knows where these kiwis have been. They've been, where are they from? They're from New Zealand. Wait a minute. Is that why we call people from New Zealand kiwis? Because kiwis come from there? I actually never thought about that. That makes a lot of sense. So we're going to give our kiwis a little bath, bath time. I don't know about you, but I do not eat kiwi skin, and I thought that was pretty standard protocol for everyone, but I have seen videos of people eating kiwi skin. It is hairy and really fibrous it's probably one of the most unappealing things i could ever imagine um but i don't know maybe they're just doing it for views let me know if you know anything about that beautiful kiwis are pretty expensive where i live so i just got two they're also one of the most common fruits to be allergic to because of their latex component avocados kiwis and bananas have a protein in them that is similar to latex i believe Okay. Next we are washing our grapes. And we don't need that many grapes, so I'm just going to wash a small amount. I'll wash the rest later. People eat grapes in stores, but if you think about the people that pick the fruit and how far the fruit has traveled and how many people have touched it in the store, I don't want to eat it personally. You do you. These grapes look really juicy. Let's try one. Mmm. It's a big grape. Okay, so we're washing our grapes and we're cutting them in half um, horizontally if they're not perfectly round. And then I'm going to strain the peaches, but you can keep the juice for something else. Strain the pineapple, keep the juice, and we're going to cut up the kiwis too. Always rinse your cans off. Some people go as far as to wash them, but I just rinse them. People often ask me how I do stuff with long nails, and I just, I'm used to having long nails. Just, you just figure it out. Okay, so there's our pineapple juice. Don't want to spill that. It's super sticky. And we are actually going to fully dry off our pineapple. We 
don't want it to make our pizza soggy. And if you don't like pineapple and pizza, this is one pizza you'll be able to get behind. So, I don't know how many we'll need. I'm gonna take out five. Oop. And we're leaving them whole, like whole in their little rings because they look pretty. This, there's five. And we'll set that aside. And now the peaches. Not sure how many peaches, but oh, here's a little peach end. Mmm. Peach down. We're off to a bad start. These peaches are pretty thickly sliced. I might have to make them thinner. We'll see. They're almost like fifths of a peach more than slices. Yeah, look, ooh, look how thick that is. It's like a quarter. I'm going to cut those to make them thinner. And then we'll decide if we need any more. like the texture of peaches and nectarines but I love them. I think they're so good. Okay, um I'm gonna do one more peach. By the way I recommend red grapes for this, not green grapes, because of the aesthetic. It's always about the aesthetic, isn't it? Okay, and now set our peach juice aside. Let's cut our grapes. This is quite a complex recipe, so it's not something you make every day for no reason. Have smaller knives right now if you're wondering why I'm using this big <laughs> knives are in the dishwasher this grape is really long it's almost like a toe we'll still cut it but maybe I'll just use half of it or three a third of it Starting to smell the cookie. Getting done in there. I don't really know how much grapes I need. I've actually never made this before, by the way. My mom always makes it, but I was craving it, and then I realized that you need to know about this delicious item that you can eat. You can eat it whenever, but if you don't have a lot of time, you might want to buy like a sugar cookie mix because there is a lot of steps. Okay, I don't know if that's enough grapes, but that should be good for now. Let's put the knife away from the work area. So for our sauce, we are going to use cream cheese. I bought the light version because I feel like this is such a decadent dessert. You don't really need the full fat version, but traditionally you use the full fat version for this. oven off. I always like to say off when I turn the oven off because I'm such a scatterbrain that sometimes I'll like not remember important things like that. So that's going to keep cooking a little bit or baking because it's still really hot. 
set that aside. Back to what we were doing. Back to our cream cheese. I can get it open. Talked a big game about being able to use my nails. Okay, there we go. Um, this might actually be soft enough. I said it out when we started. We don't want it warm. Um, this is when having my spatula would be really convenient. Let me see if I can find it. Success. Okay. I'm just going to get the last little bits of cream cheese out. So now we're going to mix some icing sugar. into our cream cheese. This is the part of the recipe I don't have, but I'm just gonna start off with a cup. This, this isn't that serious. Like it is, but it's hard to mess up cream cheese icing. So you're basically just looking for consistency. So I'm gonna mix these two together, hopefully. This bendy little spatula. I should have softened the cream cheese. Or maybe I should use one of my big spoons. So let's switch to this bigger spoon. It has more leverage. This is where having an electric mixer would be pretty convenient, but we're going old school style, 1960s. Actually, I'm pretty sure electric mixers were invented by then. Someone look that up. Let me know. Comment down below. When did electric mixers get invented? I think they were probably invented as early as the 40s. Maybe even earlier. Okay, this is getting nice and soft already. I don't know if the sugar like breaks down the cream cheese, but look, it's really melting. Maybe it's the friction melts it. That should make it a lot sweeter, I imagine. Make sure there's no lumps in it. I guess sifting the sugar would have been a good idea in that case. A spoon, because we're sharing. That was a lot. Mm, perfect. I'm just gonna switch to the spatula so I can get all the little edges. Do you wanna lick this spoon? Do you like cream cheese icing? I don't know if you're supposed to put vanilla in. Let's put a little vanilla in. This recipe is probably written down somewhere, but I didn't bother finding it. Bakers that don't get fat amaze me. <laughs> I don't bake that often because I will. I will eat it all pretty quickly, like a day. So we only bake intermittently. It's also, it is a lot of work. It's fun though. I find it easier than cooking for me personally. Okay, I just put a little bit of vanilla in to add some flavor without changing the color of the sauce. That's our pizza sauce. Put that aside. Now, we do need our cookie to cool, so I'm gonna pop it in the fridge and then we'll come back to it. My floor right now is an absolute mess. Um, but I knew that would happen, so I timed this baking 
activity for the day. I was planning to wash my voice. So now for the cheese. You're supposed to use apple jelly, but apple jelly is strangely hard to find. So just, if you can't find jelly, get a jam that doesn't have fruit chunks in it. I picked up this peach, mango, and orange, and it doesn't have fruit chunks in it. So again, I don't know how much to use. I'll just take out for now and we're gonna melt this so we're gonna pop it in the microwave and let's get out our pizza so we're gonna spread our sauce all over the pizza I really need a bigger spatula. I think I broke my larger one that came with this one in a set. Actually, I probably broke it one Christmas when I made four different types of desserts by hand. Okay, that actually looks like a lot of sauce. I'm gonna spread it evenly around our pizza and leave a little crust so that there's somewhere for people to grab their piece of pizza. Just like a real pizza. Okay. Let's see if our jam is melted. So now, ooh, we gotta cut up our kiwi. Forgot. I don't really know how to skin a kiwi. I think I'll try this. Cut a slice. Hopefully the skin can come off. I have a pretty dull knife, which I know some people think are dangerous, but when you're clumsy like me, it's actually safer to have a dull knife. You just have to know your knife is dull so you don't. Like if someone came over for some reason and was using my knives, I would warn them. So if you don't know it's a dull knife and you're handling it like a sharp knife, that could be dangerous too. Let me know if you're team dull knives or team sharp knives. How it happened is I moved into my first apartment when I was 21 or 22 and I bought new knives and I was cutting an avocado and slipped a little and it really cut my finger open like quite bad because it was so sharp. And I wasn't used to that and it was really scary. So ever since then, I don't sharpen my knives. And when I have new knives, which is rare, it's very stressful. Okay, so I'm kind of making these look all like ruffly, but they still look pretty. So why I decided to cut that line is I thought it would make the skin come off more easily. And I think I was right. If we have any kiwis watching, do you eat a lot of kiwis? This is the one time I agree that having a sharper knife would be better. Because the skin of these is pretty tough. Uh oh. That was not the perfect cut. I haven't had a kiwi in so long. They used to be, I'm gonna cut this one skin off, in fruit salad. 
but have you noticed fruit salad kind of went extinct? I don't know if it's because fruit costs too much or if it was like a fad in the 90s and early 2000s. This kiwi's not as ripe, so I'm actually going to cut its skin on. That sounds a bit morbid, doesn't it? Uh oh. This one's not looking so hot. <laughs> They're pretty weird fruit, actually. It's like little seeds. Interesting. I was trying to decide how to pick a ripe kiwi, and generally a good rule is when they're squishy. But maybe this one's overripe. Oh. Okay, we'll set these aside and we'll save them if we need to, but we might have enough. Okay. Now, the fun part. Bring your pizza over. How should we start? I think we should start with the pineapple ring in the center. And a grape. And then put peaches around that. This is where you get to let your creativity flow. So, kiwis, I wonder if we should cut them. Do a row of kiwis. Better to have extra than not enough because ideally your fruit pizza is perfectly symmetrical. But if you're not that uptight, you could just throw a bunch of chunks on there. But we're gonna try to make ours look really pretty. Okay, I need a kiwi that's shorter for this little area I've made. Beautiful. Okay, so now let's do, I don't think we're going to be able to fit the pineapples in the way that I was originally picturing. So let's cut the pineapples up into, I don't know, what do you call these? Chunks. Let's do pineapple grapes. Great. I can't remember how my mom does it. We'll see if we can get her approval. Mm, it smells so nice. My fridge is so loud, sorry about that. But it's important, we need, we need the fridge. Imagine life without a fridge, how inconvenient. All your food would spoil and you'd have to go get fresh food all the time or like make ice somehow. I don't know how you would make ice if you had no fridge. Okay. I'm running low on space. So, I don't know if we can like incorporate some more peach somehow. Uh oh, I kind of made an awkward cap. If 
I can crack it. Oh no. Oh no. I'm going to carefully shift everyone over and see if we can fit. Okay, we got in. That's beautiful. That's actually so pretty. But there is a little bit of a rim, so let's add... Let's add more peach somehow. Maybe in tiny chunks. Hopefully I don't worry about this. Ultimately, how it tastes is more important, but it is something that's so pretty, so it's nice if it can be beautiful and delicious. We're just going to outline the whole edge with my peach, and then we'll show you bird's eye view of our beautiful food pizza. Oh no, and then we have one more step, actually, with our jelly. Remember the jelly? I almost forgot it. So it's actually my dog's 11th birthday today, so we can pretend that this is for him, even though he won't be eating any. I'm gonna take him to the store to buy him a present after. I need a bit more peaches. so sticky but I am notorious for that how often do you guys wash your floors in my mind I want to wash mine once a week but it doesn't always happen that way okay these ones are a bit more gapped than the other ones so let's add some peach to fill in this Okay, I'm letting me show you a bird's eye view before we do the next step. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so for our final step, we are going to be pouring the liquid jelly over top of our fruit. I'm going to use a spoon because I don't want it to look ugly. Hmm. You know what? I don't know what the best way to do this is. Let's just dip drizzling. Basically, you want to cover everywhere with your jam. Oh, that's a bit hot. As I'm pouring this on, I can see why part of the reason you use the apple jelly is because it's clear. So it shows your fruit pattern more clearly, but too late now, we're already into this. I should have used my pineapple jelly, but I have a little bit left. Oh. So after this, we're gonna let this chill because why we poked holes in the cookie is we want all of that icing sauce to get into the cookie dough, or the cookie not dough anymore and penetrate it. So if I could go back in time, I definitely would have put this on before the fruit because now our design doesn't look as pretty, but I don't know how to correct it. I'm gonna try to get a little bit of it off of the focal point at least. I 
basically the same color as the peaches is a problem. But at least we captured how it looked before this part. And this is part of baking and cooking is you learn from experience. So whenever you have little mishaps, you don't do that again. <laughs> So I'm just kind of pushing the jelly off of the kiwi and the center point so that you can see its beauty. Oh, I'm so disappointed about this sauce. That's okay, it'll still taste really good. So take down a note if you make this and you can't find apple jelly, which is basically clear, you want to put your jelly on before your fruit slices. So cream cheese jelly, then your fruit slices, and then you can still see your beautiful fruit pattern. Okay. I'm just going to add one more kiwi so I can not... Some people are going to get double kiwi pieces in their bite. Okay. So let's pop that back in the fridge and let it cool down and then we'll slice it up. You know what? I forgot to light this candle for our baking experience. I wanted it to be cozy. Cozy autumn. We can light it now. It's never too late. Okay. Let's take our chilled pizza out and slice it up and have a try on the slice and see how delicious it is. Ideally, we would take it off of the pizza pan, but I'm a little bit nervous to do that, so I'm going to leave it on there. Let's slice up our pizza and have a taste. Here's our final view of our beautiful pizza. Of course, it should have a little more of a pattern. This isn't quite as chilled as it should be. So I'm just going to do one slice. Actually, I'm going to do a little slice. so good even though it's still a little bit warm soft cookie sweet cream cheese mm. definitely make this if you love fruit and sugar cookies mm -hmm. I like how you can taste the flour and the salt and the butter of the cookie I definitely recommend using real cookie dough. It makes a difference.